by now and it's also been recorded. Um, I'm Daniel Clark, chair of the committee. Um, during the meeting, you'll also hear from the other members who um, you've just heard from. Uh, hopefully um, they'll have more to say later. Also present are officers of the council who will have um, who will have produced the reports. Um, there's a little comment here I have to make, which is that if we experience a connection problem, this event will be paused. If a councillor loses connection or joins later, I think Laura will ask them to introduce or reintroduce themselves for the benefit of the viewers. Um, in the event that I lose connection, Keith House will take over. So the first item on the agenda would be public participation, but I believe that there's no public participation because we've had no one register. So we'll move on to the minutes. Um, are there any comments on the minutes? No. No, OK. Uh, can I have a proposal yeah. that we accept them? Happy to propose. Councillor Corbyn. Okay. Thanks, Ian. A seconder? Yep, happy to second. Keith, thank you. Um, all agreed? I feel yes. there's nothing yes. else to say. Yes. That's right. That's great. So apologies, we've already covered. Um, Sarah Tyson Payne. Um, so on to item four, declarations of interest. Do members have any declarations of interest? OK, so we'll move right. on to item five then. It's actually Phil Bates, I believe, who's going to be introducing the report. So I'll hand over to um, Phil. Good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you for this. Um, yeah, this report's been prepared and I assume uh, sort of everyone's pre-read it. It's about introducing uh, as policy a requirement for all licensed drivers, uh, that's Hackney Carriage and private hire drivers, to undertake some form of safeguarding training. Um, the report outlines the reasons uh, this has come into place. Uh, there's a parliamentary task and finish group that, that uh, made recommendations that this were to occur. Uh, the Department for Transport Standards document recently published uh, makes reference to it as well. Uh, and it sort of all started after uh, some unsavoury incidents that happened elsewhere in the country where safeguarding uh, linked to some of the taxi trades was, was identified. Um, initially, off on this, we were looking at trying to do uh, an online session for uh, the drivers and uh, the cost at that time was thought to be £18 and that was uh, put out to the trade in the consultation letter um, since then, we've had sort of the safeguarding boards uh, uh, get involved uh, across Hampshire and they were concerned at uh, the online courses, uh, felt that uh, it would be uh, possible for people to uh, log on, as the applicant log on, but then a brother, sister, friend, whoever sit and undertake the course without any real checks and they were keen to ensure that it was the appropriate uh, applicant that actually took the course and felt it was very important that actually the applicants did take the course. So they were seeking uh, an in-person course. So pre-COVID days we were looking at um, you know, getting a block of people into a classroom uh, with a presenter and that then pushed the course, cost of the course to £25. Um, the Responses to the consultation uh, were mixed. It wasn't a queue. I think there, uh, there weren't very many people that responded to it. Um, but uh, the, the views expressed were mixed. There are some saying, yes, I want to sign up to it. There are others saying, I think it's a complete and utter waste of time and waste of money. A couple expressed concern around the, the, the payment, uh, uh, having to pay for it. Um, but I also think some of the comments identified actually that, yeah, Although they don't feel they need the training, it did identify the fact that they do need training. Comments such as, well, you know, my job is to drive people from A to B. I'm not there to be, you know, their, their social worker sort of thing. Well, that just identified to me that they weren't really aware of, you know, what they could do to help their community. Um, so, uh, the, the report is sort of seeking uh, to approve that change of policy and for head of legal to be given to, uh, sort of discretion to approve the provider and to uh, sort of change the implementation date uh, because initially we, we've had it recommended for the beginning of January, but there, there could be some difficulties in trying to get that approved of the provider. 
Um, I'm aware some members and some of the trade reps have attended a, a course locally with Blue Lamp uh, and have found that to be a, a good course uh, and something that uh, the, the trade reps and I think the councils all, all found to be acceptable uh, and details of that are sort of uh, within the report as well. Um, I think that effectively summarises it. OK, thank you. So everyone's read the report. I'll open it up to questions and comments. So David has asked first. So David. Thank you, Chair. And I'll move the recommendations um, first of all so that uh, we've got something to debate around. Um, and thank Phil for his introduction as well. Um, um, so so I should say, first of all, that um, I'm speaking as chair of the licensing committee, chair of the um, license vehicle forum that we have, and obviously as part of my cabinet portfolio for transport. There's some good news today for the taxi trade and taxi drivers in that um, uh, BA are um, aiming to fly to 11 destinations from Southampton in the coming summer. They have, after all, had a very raw time and as far as earnings are concerned over, uh, um, <clears throat> during the last few months. Safeguarding um, is, a, is, is really, really important. It's one of the standing items on our licensed vehicle forum um, agendas that we have. And as Phil rightly said, it follows a lot of problems that there were in one or two towns and cities in parts of the country, um, which all hit the national headlines in TV and uh, press, um, all for the stuff for the wrong reasons. So it is really imp a really, really important um, subject all round. The trade both the Hackney and the private hire have accepted that they have a responsibility as safety is the number one item of importance in the way they operate um, their businesses and their jobs, ensuring the confidence of the user to use the services that they're offering. Safety is also the number one um, when it comes to importance in the, in the way in which the um, <coughs> licensing system operates as well. Licensing is about ensuring the safety of the passenger who uses, uses the service that um, they, they um, want, to, want to use. So initially, I think um, some of the um, trade members and, and um, taxi drivers and so on were a little concerned um, that they were being expected to take on a role that wasn't quite um, what they signed up to do in driving cars uh, from A to B, as Phil said. And they were a little bit hesitant about what was going to be expected of them. But I have to say that um, they have, have taken this on board seriously and they do understand that this is something of real importance uh, but it also showed up the need for good training at the same time. The recommendations provide a change in policy requiring drivers to undertake approved uh, in-person safeguarding training every three years. Um, this is <coughs> there will be a transition period for uh, existing drivers and the provider and nature of the training is to be delegated to the head of, head of legal services as you will have read and heard. New Forest District Council developed a, a, a computer package and uh, Nicky Morehouse from Legal and I and uh, to a past member and a past um, member of our staff as well uh, went down to Lindhurst and um, undertook that course and Nicky and I both uh, managed to pass it successfully I'm glad to say um, and this and some trade representatives of, along with other members of our licensing team have undertaken the Blue Lamp Trust uh, course. Eastleigh drivers are well aware of the Blue Trust and um, the Blue Lamp Trust, and they've undertaken other training courses provided by them. And I think our, our officers and, um, <coughs> and licensing staff, myself as cabinet member, uh, are of the opinion that the Blue Lamp Trust course better meet, need, meets the needs of level of training we wish to see. 
The finance issues are set out in paragraph 14 of the report and the recommendations meet the Parliament's um, ta task and finish groups uh, report recommendations and that of also the um, safeguarding boards. So with that, I, as I say, I move the move the paper. OK, um, thank you for that, David. We're in danger of get, having a little bit of confusion here because when I asked for people to speak, I, I sort of indicated whether, you know, for people to speak on um, general comments and to uh, raise questions. So um, thanks for proposing that. But before we go to a second, I'll just see if anyone has any general questions because Margaret's indicated she just wants to raise some questions rather than debate the recommendation. So go ahead, Margaret. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, I, I just wondered when, when we are doing this course, what evidence will drivers be given to show that they've successfully completed the course and how will that work in present presenting it on the licensing application form? How will that be evidence that they've done the course? Would any certificate be required um, uh, in, uh, for this course other than Blue Lamp Trust be acceptable? So if somebody else provided safeguarding training, when the uh, taxi driver goes to uh, apply for his license, would a similar certificate be acceptable to us or does it have to be from the Blue Lamp Trust? Um, I think those were my main questions because somewhere in the report, I think it was mentioning school run taxis. And I just wanted to check that I would have thought that they already had to have safeguarding and were had an enhanced DBS check before they can do school run checks. I don't know about that, but I just wondered if that was the case. And also in respect to vulnerable people who may not necessarily be school children. Okay. So I just wondered if somebody could clarify those points for me, please. Thanks, Margaret. Um, are there any other general questions? And then Phil can answer them all together. OK, go ahead then, Phil, if you could answer them. Thank you, Chair. Um, regards to evidence, uh, with the Blue Lamp Trust, uh, yes, they, they do produce a certificate, which we would expect to see. We also have links with the Blue Lamp Trust, uh, who will advise us of individuals that have attended and uh, passed the, that particular course. Um, with regards, if we would accept uh, a certificate from other providers, um, if that could happen. Say so currently we've uh, sort of dealt with Blue Blue Lamp Trust uh, at Eastley and found them to be uh, an approved, you know, or would, would meet the standards that we would expect. Um, in Southampton, we've been using a company called Personnel Checks as well, provide a very similar course. Um, and that might be something that Eastley would wish to look at. Uh, 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 approving a, a second provider and, and other providers. The, the danger is, is that uh, we wouldn't want a provider. We, we want to make sure that the provider does carry out the necessary checks. As I say, the, the, the big thing is to make sure that it's the applicant that sits the course and, and not his friend, brother, etc. So yes, it, it, it could be expanded uh, along that line. To reassure you with regards to DBS checks, all of our drivers are um, enhanced DBS checked. Uh, both the buyer and lists are checked and the check that we do is, um, uh, I've forgotten the category now, uh, all workforces effectively. Um, it's a slightly wider check than the school run drivers get with Hampshire County Council because that is restricted to um, uh, just uh, uh, adult and children. So uh, th there's a slightly wider check already carried out on uh, our licensed drivers to reassure you. OK. Satisfied. Thank you. Margaret? Yes. yes, thank you, Chair. Thank Great, you, thanks. Do I have a seconder then for um, David's proposal? Do I have a seconder so we can then move to debate? OK, thanks. Ian, would you like to speak? Can't hear you, Ian. <laughs> OK, <laughs> right, OK, we'll go to debate then. We've got a... Sorry, I am there. Sorry, Chair. I'm, oh, sorry. I can hear you now. 
I'm pushing and prodding and, and everything and it's muting and unmuting. I apologize. Oh. Um, yes, I'm, I'm happy to. I'm happy to support the principle of what we're, of what we're talking about here seems in, eminently sensible. The process that we've gone through is fine. Anyone that's had a and anybody that's gone through a gone through a, a, um, a, a practical the, the paper, sorry, I can't think of the word, the driving test and this type of thing where people turn up to do to do assessments and whether that's in person or online. I'm, I, I think we're all comfortable with the principle of doing that to keep the uh, to keep the security of the um, of the process going, make sure the right person's there. So I'm very happy to um, to second that. Thank you. OK, thank you for that. Um, any other speakers? Keith has indicated he wants to speak, so I'll go to Keith now. Thanks so much, uh, Dan. And um, I very much support the approach that's here. Uh, this does seem to be a very sensible thing to do, and it, it genuinely is about safeguarding. Um, I'm always a bit worried about DBS, DBS checks because DBS checks all, all they prove is that someone hasn't been caught yet. Um, and most of the most of the, most of the big issues that the country's had with uh, with child safety issues have been around people who who, who uh, had DBS checks as well. So um, it just means they haven't been caught. Um, but this is this is different. This is genuine genuine training um, and to tackle a real problem uh, and it's a good thing. The difficulty I've got with it uh, is the charge. I don't think the charge is reasonable um, and I'll, I'll explain why if I can. Um, firstly, we did this consultation two years ago. I don't quite know why it's taken two years to get from doing a consultation to bring it back before us. Um, I don't think, well I certainly didn't know anything about it until recently, I'm sure you didn't either Dan. Um, it just popped up in my inbox. Um, and when we did that consultation, seven, seven of the ten drivers that were consulted weren't happy with the charge. Um, and we haven't really given the rationale. And we're also we're also suggesting monopoly provider um, uh, for for that training. Uh, the Blue Lamp Trust is a, is a brilliant organisation. I've no 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 qualms about them at all. Uh, they, they're a good thing. But it looks like we've gone for a, a, an easy quick win here uh, without thinking about the economic consequences to to taxi drivers. Taxi drivers uh, don't have a terribly terribly easy time of, of life at the moment. Uh, they might do at some point in the future. Who knows? Um, but they certainly don't right now. And they're probably not likely to for quite a long time. Uh, and I'm always wary that we that we end up adding costs uh, onto people in professions and trades. Uh, and this is a cost that's that is probably going to be 25 pounds. I don't know. It's not clear from the report because when, when this was tested two years ago, it was 18 pounds. Um, we don't know where it would go to. So I'm very happy with recommendations one and two. Um, but I think we should we should have a paper brought back to us on options uh, to deal with uh, how this is actually worked through. Um, and I would think it ought to be a, a the financing of it should end up being a growth bid for the health portfolio uh, because I think that's where the cost should lie. I don't think it should lie with the taxi drivers and that will probably give us a bit more incentive to sharpen our pencil in terms of what the cost is if we're paying for it as opposed to simply offloading on the taxi drivers. So Joe, I'll move an amendment if I can. I may not get a second, we'll yeah, see. Yeah. I'll move an amendment which is to uh, delete recommendation three uh, or rather uh, or rather have um, the uh, provision uh, of the training brought back to us on the basis of the council covering the cost. OK, that's fine. So could I have a seconder for that, please? I'll, I'll second it, Chair, for the Thank sake you, of, of getting, the, getting the motion going through. <laughs> right, OK, any, any debate on the amendment then? OK, I'll take that as no. So if you could unmute just to signal agreement with the amendment. Yes. Yes. Agreed. Agreed. Anyone against the amendment? No. OK. Any further debate on the motion then? The substantive motion. Very right, happy okay. to support you... on that basis, Chair. <laughs> OK, that's fake. That's great. So if everyone can, everyone can just unmute and confirm that they support the amended motion. Yes. Agreed. 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 Anyone against? Agreed. No. OK, that's great. Well, thank you very much. Next meeting's on the 1st of February, I believe. Um, happy Christmas to anyone I won't see before. <laughs> Thank you very Thanks. much. Thank you, Chair. Happy Christmas, one and all. And to you, Chair. Goodbye. Everyone, you and to anyone.